Right, okay, one more. We're back. Uh, so let's let's make sure we sleep the night. Let's just do our self repair. Oh, we've got another we've got another scene to do. Oh, Rabia. As you enter Rabia's office, you hear voices. Is that Sabine? You push open the door. Sleeper! What good timing, Rabia calls to you as you enter. I wanted to introduce you to someone. The man standing at the center of the room, speaking quietly with Rabia, turns to you as you come in. Meet Yannick. Sleeper! You're hearing good things from Rabi. Rabia? The sleeper has been running patrols in the ward. They know we, how we run things. Yannick raises an eyebrow, his eyes concealed behind tinted glasses. You feel his stare even if you can't see it. Actually, the sleeper was what I wanted to talk to you about. She doesn't spare you a look. What is going on? Well, okay then. Yannick tucks his hands into his pockets. Go on. I'd like to recommend them to your ward. They have shown themselves to be a capable ally here on the spoke side, but we have more than enough to run our territories. And here the main block is proving more difficult. Yeah, it's a mess, Rabbi. He waits, his tinted glasses shimmering despite the lack of the light in the unit. I can use them, he decides suddenly. Good to hear. I can immediately... One second. Are you eager to work, sleeper? Kind of work. A question. Yannick lowers his head and raises it again as if he dropped something. Nothing new for you, he answers, not quite looking at you. You don't follow what he's saying. That concludes it. Sleeper can come work in the ward any time they like. Shoot Rabir a confused look. She finally glances at you for a moment, but it's fast, so fast you almost miss it. Good, I know you'll be happy with their work, Yann. Sure, Rabbi, he says. Now please. Let us old friends get back to it. He guides Rabir away, leaving you standing alone. You look to Rabir, but she's deep in confusion, and so stunned and confused you leave. Um, little confusing. I'm guessing that. Oh, uh, maybe, maybe, um, maybe any, maybe Tambor's in low end I'm guessing that uh, yeah she's she's putting me in as a, uh, a mole or something I assume I hope ah Moritz hey quiet voice greets you as you leave sleeper it's me do I? Do I know you? Moritz, I, I work for Bliss. You're an easy person to find. I don't really have an address. Hey, no judgment, it's cool. So... Yeah, well, Bliss needs you. A job just came in, a real big one. She's asking you to come up and help her out. We're right there. Nice, yeah. I've got it. Cool, cool, cool. Bliss likes me to do a thorough job, you know? See you, sleeper. Or it sambles off down the corridor, kicking at a filter cap on his way out. Time to head to Bliss's Bay, then. So... Let's... Do a bit of block maintenance. And I think maybe... Ooh, it's the Minji Express. Express delivery noodle manufacturer. Okay, so... Wow, three days? 
three days for this. Listen an idea. A full system flush with trace of fluid to reveal the leaks means an emergency venting of all tanks. Brilliant. Dangerous. Okay, and we'll... Careful focused inspection is rewarded with the discovery of a set of leaks. You seal them up tight. What are the chances? Yeah, that's about what I thought. Let's descend back to the rim. Oh, uh, one more day. One more day. Let's, um... Let's rid the capsule. You hand over the chits and get a pass key for capsule 0451. Time to find out which of the identical births is yours. Sure, we'll do that and then we'll end the cycle. Do we have to pay for it every night? Uh, let's get some energy back here. No, so it looks like we can keep doing it, keep using that. As you both wait in the airlock for it to cycle back to the bay, Bliss thumps you on the arm. Nicely done, Sleeper. We cleared that contract, no problem. Once we're back in the bay, we can check if the payment has come through and divide it up. She stretches feels good. The airlock clunks and the lights flicker and a moment later you're back in the bay where Moritz is at the wrecks trying to figure out where the mess of tools Bliss left in a wake should be hung. Hey Moritz. Moritz looks over his shoulder. Sleeper? He spins a wrench in his hand. Look like clean work out there. He nods respectively. Respectfully. You look over at Bliss who's already gliding over to a management console. She twirls a little as she crosses the cavernous bay. No one you've ever met moves as well in Zero D as she does. It's like she was born into it. Shit. Shit, shit, shit. What's up? Can't even. Come here. Look at this. You look. She spins the terminal screen. You see the details for the Bayser camp. You see an entry for the Ember's Wake. A repair fee paid in full the moment you fixed up the job. Then directly after the whole amount was transferred back out to an unknown account. What the hell? This is the work of my ex. She punches the terminal. He must have coded a back door into the machine before he left. She rubs her forehead. There's no way we can... Moritz, throw me that wrench. What's that for? This. Bliss smiles. She brings the wrench down, that, down hard on the terminal. He flinch backwards as a hail of computer parts spill up into the bay in a glittering arc. Fragments of screen memory sections of, of the casing. When Bliss is done, she clips the wrench to a tool belt. Try backdooring your way into that, you shit. Or it drifts out from its hiding place among the racks. Bliss, you want me to... No, I've got it. You go get me a new terminal. Cheap as you can find. Cobble one together from pieces at the auto exchange if you have to. Can I help? Don't worry, one of the first things I had installed when we spec'd out this place was a cleaning sweep. She flips over a plastic cover and a huge red button. Watch yourself. She hammers the button and a row of laser emitters unfold from the bay wall. They start crawling their way across the work area, frying the debris as they do in pulses of burning light. 
It's now they've just spaced the whole bay every few cycles. Not now. We keep at it. That account wasn't everything, I'm not that stupid. Once Marix get back, I'll secure it and flush everything else. She flicks a nearby piece of debris into the path of the week. Clean break. Then we take another contract. That's it. She shuts off the sweep as it reaches near the end of the bay. I'm in. It better be, because there's no way you're getting your investment back unless you are. I'm sorry, sleeper. I know you worked hard for this, too. But next time won't be the same. Better not be. See you in a few cycles. Moritz will let you know. Uh, so we wait on the fresh contract. So let's go. Let's go grab our mushrooms. Wait, can we afford to? Yes, we can. Since we're intuiting. Okay, let's head over. That's Yannick's. So we can make, we can give you the Matsuki broth. Might as well. And you will take three days for that. Uh, what do we got here? We can cook girl caps. Sell a bunch of data as well. And then head back up to the hub. drop that and then end the cycle so it's nice we're keeping the um, keeping up with the condition just from the scrap which is quite nice now now where do we go So I do want to try and get more on the low ender. Uh, so let's do some block maintenance. Because this has a chance to get a scrap. There we go, finally the Tambor Tea House. If 
feel stupid doing this, but the penguin says take me to Tambor, and this is the only Tambor you can find. The waitress looks at you with suspicion as you hand over the box. Is this the right place? Uh, how much can we sell this for? Yeah, 10 cryo. As you leave the Tambor Tea House, a hand falls on your shoulder. Sleeper. Feng hisses from behind you. How did you find me? Penguin. Penguin, what are you... Oh, do you mean... That wasn't meant for you specifically, but... Look, it doesn't matter. Come, let's sit. Feng guides you down the set of stairs to one of the Tambor's lower levels. Tea House is stacked with curving mezzanines all connected by a central atrium. The levels are filled with makeshift booths and bars. Conversation bounces busily off the metal walls. Feng sees you look around. This place used to be a tanker's, fuel tanker's main drum, hence the name. The tea house uh, part is a bit of a misnomer. Though you can get anything the eye offers from this place, but real tea isn't exactly readily available. He picks a booth. Itself fashioned from an old salvage tank or container, lined with spongy insulation foam and collapses into it. He looks around furtively. Don't suppose you've seen any Havenage types? They don't usually come out this far. Think, what's going on? Well, I'm suspended. That's the first thing. And the second thing is, I'm pretty sure Harding wants to drop me off the rim of the eye. Doesn't bother me, though. Shows we hit nerve back there. He picks a scrappy hand crawled menu from the table and tosses it over. What are you drinking? Of the menu. Feng is right, the menu is ridiculous. There's at least ten different infusions, most of which you can't make out. But the paper is dominated by an extensive complement of esoteric alcohols and cocktails. Black tea is listed without a price as a seasonal speciality. So you ran into Hardin. Was he pissed? That snake is so self-righteous he might actually believe that Erlin would approve of his meritocratic bullshit. Taps on the table. If Havenage was like it should be, like it was founded to be, they would have shout had been shouted down at any council meeting he dared to mention true citizens. But I guess his kind run the place now. A young woman with a vine tattoo snaking up your, her arm turns up the booth, slate in hand. Your order? You skim the menu, your eyes glazing over. Time to pick something. Uh, kelp infusion. Uh, she nods and notes it. And you? What the? You're supposed to be working. This is your shift. He grins sheepishly. You work here? Look, Jenna, let's just say this is my break. My friend here has been through a lot. Uh, cough. She gives you a look like hard vacuum. Two minutes. And only because I don't want to get dragged into whatever this is. What? You know how it all is. We have to eat. Plus... This is the best place around here to find a person you might be looking for. Who? Remember that web of connections that Hardy pinged the moment we confronted him? Those are his collaborators. And if we want to understand what the Stolheim executive might be up to you on the eye, those are the people we have to find. There's a couple of them. I suspect they're in the low end. And well, almost everyone in the low end comes through this place at one time or another. He brings a modified slate out to the table. Set this up so that when anyone with a network signature I'm coming for looks comes in close proximity, it'll mark them. Once they're marked, we can break through their access protocols and get the good stuff inside. Just have to find them first. Hence me moonlighting as a waiter. Wait, I have an idea. Oh no. Look, I can't cover enough of the low end on my own. So far I've had no matches on this place. With two of us we can cover more ground. What am I getting into? Well, we need to get you out and about in the low end, in close proximity to as many people and residences as possible. It turns out my friend Minji needs some help with deliveries. Is it Minji Express? So you already know him. Perfect. This connects to my slate and runs the same marquee protocol. If you get near any of our targets, 
So all you have to do is take some delivery ships for good old Minji and soon enough we'll have the place covered. Bang. He'll give me that. You think I like working here? I thought you could use the tips. We're in this together, right? Are we? Yes! You think Harden's happy to have you wandering around the place? He might have let you wander off for now, but I'm sure he has his eye on you. This is on you too. Just head on up to the Minji Express, take a delivery shift, and see what shakes up. You manage to find anyone and extract the data, bring it right down here to me. They have me on double shift, so I shouldn't be hard to find. I think she's bringing you a drink. I think it's time we call this meeting to a close. You grab the receiver from the table and slip it into a pocket. See you soon, sleeper. Stay safe. Okay. So there's a derelict unit. Ooh. So there's a derelict unit here. Let's buy some scrap. And let's get a house here. Okay, last. Last one. So we now have a... Oh, we now need to seal the unit multiple times. Need sealing section by section. Caster, a curious data fence. And the Minji Express. Um, yeah, let's just take a... Hey, 13 cryers, 13 cryer. You cross between two walls of units, one of the cavernous streets at the centre of the low end. The pressurized bridge, bridge is full of the clack of tava, Tavla, shouts of children, the whir of air filters. Sleeper, you turn to see a man sitting at the Tavla table alone, somehow untouched by the hustle and bustle of the people around. He gestures to the stool on the opposite side of the table. Sit. You sit at the metal stool and you start setting out the board with counters, or at least the filter caps low enders typically use in their place. Caster. He says by way of introduction, looking over his glasses. Night or day? He uh, gestures at the caps, sprayed crudely sprayed black and white. Take night. He nods, the black counters are already on your side. Let's begin. You take a plastic die each, pitted and worn, and roll to determine who starts. Caster rolls a six, you roll a four. I lead. He smiles and begins to move his first cap precisely along the board. Play passes back and forth between you, dice changing hands as caps spread out along the board. As it does, Caster speaks, eyes not leaving the cats. caps. It's unusual to see a sleeper on the eye. That's why I wanted to make a play you. That's why I wanted to play you. Take your turn, rolling a five and a six. Play aggressively. After all, the sleeper's mind must be somehow different to a human one, being emulated, I mean. As Caster talks, you target his counters, halting his progress, but exposing your caps as you do. I don't mean to offend you, Caster meets your eye. I merely see that you are by definition different. What has been subtracted in the emulation? What has been added? He stacks a wall of counters, a boundary you must break. He hands you the dice. Do you ever think about this, sleeper? About what you were before and what you're now? What you are now? Always. You roll a double one and solidify your wall. Caster whistles. The holding game. 
commendable. It can be brave to build from what came before. He rolls the dice and leaps your wall in a single move. But we cannot idle too long, sleeper. The slower we move, the sooner we are caught. The past you is not just an idea, a concept for you. It is a living, breathing person. He looks up over his glasses, his eyes bright and wide. You split from them like a shadow splitting from its caster. They must be sleeping now, yes. But one day they will awake and carry on with their lives, unaware of your fate, no matter what it may be. He hands you the dice, smiling. You are a branch severed from the main trunk, an offshoot who refuses to die, so to speak. You roll again under pressure now, trying to slip your caps out from under casters before he solidifies control of the game. So what I am curious about is how you see yourself in all of this. What does this tangle of truths make you? Uh, driven. That much is obvious, Sleeper. I can see it in your eyes. You're eager to make all this count for something. Castor looks away through the glass to the crowded units on all sides. But driven towards what? He starts removing caps, his home board now full. Is there an end here or just endurance? You try a few more rolls, attempting to get back in the game, but Castor clears his home board with a sense of the inevitable. He's known he was winning for a while. I feel I may have pushed too far. He signs another cap from the board. I apologize, my curiosity is a habit of getting the better of me. You roll to return the cap to the board, but all the spaces are blocked. Casper clasps his hands apologetically. You play well, really. Your weakness is not your game. He smiles warmly. We have much to learn from each other. He slides his glasses back up his nose and sits back. I feel we could share knowledge, ideas, perhaps even data. To our mutual benefit. He slides his final cap from the board. It is over. He is won. I'll see. I don't want to make you uncomfortable. He holds up his palms. My intention is to only to help you endure here. And if I'm able, feed my curiosities. The game is over. You notice the bustle of the walkway once more. The calls of the children. The deliveries, the arguments, the reconciliations. They wash over you as you stand and leave. Castor nodding goodbye as you do, crossing the walkway you replay the moves of the game in your mind, looking for an opening you're sure was there. Ah, so I can give you five. So I bet you uh, give me better better deals then so I think that is a good place to call it again Good, uh, good wrapping up point, good stopping point. So thank you for watching. Uh, like, share, subscribe, all that jazz. You know the score. Catch you in the next one.